Let's get a quiet clap for you. Musicians, amen. Ushers and the leaders, amen. Thank you to Reverend Wade and to all of us that are together <coughs> together this morning. To my wife, the grandbabies, and uh, my daughters and son. We thank God for all of you this morning being here. All right, little 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 grandbabies. You know, they don't they don't get to come down here often. <laughs> yeah. I learned to to y'all ain't listen to me. Y'all I know it's all right, y'all just let me say what I'm trying to say. I learned to preach and look over what children do. Because they're children. And and then to uh, grown folks don't have the attention span to be able to focus themselves on what is important. And so therefore, I want y'all to turn with me to the book of Revelation. <laughs> the book of Revelation, chapter three. The book of Revelation. And chapter 3. church in solace write these things said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars I know thy works that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. Is that what your Bible says? Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We praise you coming true to your word. And now, Lord, we ask that you would use me in spite of me, preach to and through me, Lord, that you will be heard and you will be seen. But to the uttermost, Lord, you will get the glory out of each of our lives. Lord, we hear you today, and now we stand with our hearts open unto you that we might receive that which you would have us to have, that will help us, O oh Lord, to be a church in which you called us to be. Now, Father, we ask you to have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you in advance, and we say amen. Amen and amen, amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. I want to share with us from the subject. Y'all ready? The title of the message this morning, this afternoon now, is Turn It Around. Turn It Around. Turn it around. The word says, strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. He says it's ready to die, but he didn't say it was dead. Okay. But if we don't turn it around, y'all ain't hearing me. It's going to die. Y'all hear me? Yes. 
So brothers and sisters, it is important that we understand that we must turn it around before it's too late. Amen. Time is drawing now. Time is winding up. And I say it before and I say it again. People are dying today they ain't never died before. And once you're dead, you're dead. And we need to turn it around now before it's too late. So when, 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 when the Lord spoke this to me to share today, I said earlier, I had no idea who, what, when, and where you were going to be today. But God said, this is what you need to say on the 18th anniversary that you are serving Peter at Crowell Baptist Church. And he says to me, I need to turn it around. And he says, I need to say to you, turn it around. And everyone who's listening and everyone who's watching, no matter where you are, what you are part of, you don't have to let it die. Amen. You can turn it around. Amen. All right, Cruz. <laughs> I like a witness, but <laughs> Amen. So, brothers and sisters, the name, the name Sardis, the name Sardis means the escaping one or those who came out. That's what Sardis means. Sardis, this is a message written to the churches of Asia Minor, the seven churches of Asia Minor. And it starts out by addressing the angel of the church, the messenger of the church. And these seven churches represent all of the world and its system and to the point where everybody finds their place in one or the other of these churches. There are some who left their first love as Ephesus, but then there are some that end up like Laodicea who are lukewarm. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of Ephesus and Laodicea, all of these churches, some of them, well, you take the church of Philadelphia, it was an open door church. God blessed them. And God says that this, the church at Smyrna, it had nothing about it to praise. God had nothing to praise. At the church of Ephesus and Pergamos and Thyatira, the scripture says that it had some praise. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yes. And, and, and one of the things that uh, uh, we got to understand uh, that this church uh, 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 God had something against it uh, in the point where every one of these churches Jesus starts out saying I know your works and so one thing about the Lord knowing our works he know who we are, we know what we're working for and we can't hide it we, we, can't, we can't hide it and and, and and God wants us to understand that even though Smyrna had nothing to be praised for, Ephesus and Pergamos and Thyatira had a little to be praised for, this church here, the church at Sardis, had, listen, they had, he had no good things to say about it to the point he said, y'all have a name that you live in, but you're dead. And the scripture says in Matthew chapter 23, verse 27 and 28, it tells us that, that, that it's like white as so, because they're all clean and look good on the outside, but inside is full of dead men bones. Why? Because we walk around playing the part, look the part, but we're not in the part. Right. Are y'all in yeah. we, we We become hypocrites. Or oh, we look holy, we look righteous, we look like we're doing what we're supposed to do. But then the truth be told, the curtain be pulled back and we are exposed. Who do you 
think they would see that we really are. Now, I, I can tell you for myself, I don't want y'all to see the ugliness in my life. And I know you don't want But God sees it every day. He says, I know your work. Each one of these churches, he start out after he started telling the message out there, I know your works. People say, well, you know the Lord knows my heart. The Lord knows more than your heart. Amen. He knows everything about us. Yes. But it's not too late to turn it around. Amen. Amen. He says, the seven spirits, he said, he that hath the seven spirits of God, the seven stars, these seven spirits represent the completeness of the Holy Spirit ministry. The Holy Spirit have, have a ministry and he knows who we are and he knows what we're doing with what we have been given. And this church has died. The church at Smyrna, Smyrna was about, I mean not Smyrna, but Sardis was about to die because they refused to let the Holy Spirit take control. Now, I'm not saying, Crow, that uh, 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 any other church, you know, is, is a dead church. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. But brothers and sisters, if, if, if we don't let the spirit of the living God take control now and turn it around, we're going to die out. Amen. Now, I thank God, but see, so, so don't, get up, don't get upset or offended because when we get on into the message a little further, y'all going to say there was a few names, the scripture says, that didn't defile their garments. There was a few names that showed up, but there are a lot of folks who won't show up. They say I'm with you, but they're not here. Oh, y'all ain't here, man. But they say they love Jesus, but they don't show up for Jesus. They, they say they're believers, but what do they believe in? Because that man told me that actions speak what? Louder than words. See, Jesus said in Matthew, he said, y'all honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Amen. Now, how many of you know people, when you go and you talk to them, invite them, uh, see why they're not coming to church, or see why they say, well, you know, I, I, I wanted to come, but this happened, or that happened, I had to do this, that. When are they going to go to all those other folks and all those other things and say, I can't come to y'all today because I got to go to church. Y'all ain't got that's all right. Yeah, I put you to sleep, it don't matter. But one thing to say, you got to stand before God. Yeah. All of us do. Yeah. And we're going to be without excuse when we stand before Him. Yeah. You know, people say, well, I, I wanted to come, but you know, my body was just hurting so bad. You going to hurt at home? Yeah. You going to hurt yesterday at the ball game? Or if you was, you still win. You won't hurt it when you went to work, but you still win. If you was. Amen. But but we got all these kind of excuses that we make up and stuff when it comes time to church. Amen. And I want to tell y'all, church is not made up of brick and mortar. Amen. The church is made up of you and I people who are believers in Christ Jesus. Are y'all with me? So, we must allow the Holy Spirit to take control of the ascendant. We must allow God to be first in our life, and the Holy Spirit is the paracletos, the one who will come along to help us to be what God will have us to be. Y'all with me? <laughs> See, brothers and sisters, we get so caught up in the superficial, the mundane things. And we miss what is the most important thing in life. And we get so caught up in trying to keep up with style rather than have substance. We, we get so caught up in, in raising money for churches and ministries and churches rather than the same souls. And, and, and we have put all of our energy in the wrong places. We, we, we put all of our, uh, our thrill-seeking in the wrong places. I want you to know, if you're trying to get a be a thrill-seeker thrill in the world, don't you know that the old devil that controls the world, once he thrills you, he's going to try to kill you? Y'all ain't hearing me. 
But see, we're looking for the world to give us fulfillment. We're looking for the things that money can buy. But Jesus said, you can't serve two masters. You're going to love one or you're going to hate the other. You're going to hold one or you're going to despise the other. And I want to serve notice on all of us today. We can turn it around. He said, it ain't dead yet, but it's about to die. And we got to make a change. We got to make a change in our life. We got to make a change in our thought process. Amen. And, and one thing for certain brothers and sisters, Jesus says to us, he says to us, we are to know that there's a remedy. And he says in verse 3, the remedy, therefore, is to remember. Remember. When we remember, it reminds us the importance of the Holy Spirit. It reminds us of the Holy Spirit importance. The Holy Spirit is important in all of our lives as a Christian. In fact, the Bible says in Romans 8, if you do not have the Holy Spirit, you're not His. And if you are his, then you have the Holy Spirit in you and I. And Jesus said in John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter. He's the comforter. He's the paracletos. He's the one that come along beside us and help us. He will bring all things to our remembrance whatsoever he has said. If you don't remember, God, you ain't never. Lord, have mercy. If, 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 listen, people, I want you to know, a computer can't do anything unless somebody program it. Can I get a witness? Somebody got to put it in. And if God put it in you, it's the Holy Spirit who will bring it back to our remembrance. Can I get a witness? And the Bible said, Jesus said, the, re the remedy is, first thing you got to do is remember. How many of you know that old song said, remind me? Roll back the curtains of life every now and then and remind me where you brought me from and where I could have been. See, some of us forget where we come from. Some of us forget where the Lord has brought us from. Some of us forget what the Lord has brought us through. Some of us forget where we were when the Lord came and rescued us. And now we don't get out of that uh, pit and we don't get out of that trouble. We don't get out of that. We act like we don't need it no more. We act like we, we bad enough to do it on our own now. But he said, no, no, there's a remedy to, to, to what you're going through. He said, you got to remember. And then he said, receive. Remember and receive. Notice he said, he said, re, and, 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 he said remember therefore how thou hast received. See, nothing you have came to you by yourself. God gave us everything. And he said, remember what you have received and heard. How many of you have heard that God will be a father? God will be a mother. When father and mother will forsake you, he said, then the Lord will pick you up. How many of you heard that the Lord said, I won't leave you, I won't forsake you? How many of you hear the Lord say that when you go through your valley of shadow death, I will be with you? And we heard that and we received that. But now all of a sudden we don't have to be uh, what we call better or well off. And we feel like that we can do it on our own and got away from what God's word says for us. God's word says for us, we better receive it today, that we cannot, man cannot live by bread alone. We must live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yeah. Can I get a witness? So he said when we receive the Bible lets us know that we need to hold fast to the Holy Spirit's instructions. Amen. When we he remember when we remember, he reminds us of the Holy Spirit's importance. And now when we receive, we hold fast to the Holy Spirit's instructions. What does the Holy Spirit instruct us? He instructs us in the word of God. In the Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, the scripture says, let us hold fast without wavering. Hold fast in which God has given us, that we might be able to stir up one another, provoke one another unto good love and good labor. Can I get a 
goodness. Yeah. But see, two, two sad today, when anybody loves, we don't hold fast to our faith. Because why? We got this superficial faith. We don't have the faith that comes through the word of God. Because when we have the faith in the word of God, the word of God will hold us fast. Our faith will keep us from being shipwrecked. Our faith will keep us from being tossed and driven by the angry sea. Can I get a witness? But there's so many folk have this, this weak faith, that, the faith that can't get them through anything. But I stopped by to tell you and I today, it don't take a whole lot of faith. You got the faith of a grain of mustard seed. You make it strong and you make it solid in the word of God. Now how do you know God can grow your faith? And when God grow your faith, I want you to know thou shalt not be moved. You shall be planted like a tree by the river of water that will bring forth your fruit in your season. Can I get a witness? Why is it that when you look around, so many of us that say we're believers, so many of us that say we're Christians, we don't remember what the Lord has done for us, what the Lord has brought us on. We don't receive what the Bible says that we need to be able to receive, hold fast to that what we have received and heard. Well, then he said the third thing is, the remedy is that when we remember what we received and heard. He said, repent. Notice he said, repent. Repent. Anybody know what a repent is? Yeah. Turn and go back in another direction. Yeah. Go back. If you left your first love, go back. Wherever you got off track with walking with Christ, go back. Right. Where you got off, you know where you quit reading your Bible. You know where you quit praying. You know when you quit having your faith anchored in the Lord and start putting in money, silver and gold, houses and land? Go back. The remedy is to remember what you receive and then go back to it. Yeah. Can I get a witness? The prodigal son, he remembered what his father had. He remembered where he's fallen from. Can I get a witness? Yeah. He remembered what the Lord had, what his father had in store for him. And he said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back. I'm going to return. But there's too many of us running far from God, knowing that we have received the goodness of the Lord, but yet we still are trying to take the breath that God gives us, the goodness that God gives us, and go out here and burn the candle of this world on both ends and then turn and blow the smoke in God's face. God said, enough is enough. It's about to die. Can I get a witness? You don't know when it's going to be your last time. I don't know when it's going to be mine. But my wife sing that song, but this may be the last time. I don't know. This may be the last time we ever get together. I don't know. This may be the last time we get to sing together, sit together, pray together, walk together, talk together. I don't know. See, we need to return back to the Holy Spirit inspiration. Yeah, my brothers and sisters, when we are reminded of the Holy Spirit's importance, we hold fast to the Holy Spirit instructions that causes us to return back to the Holy Spirit's instruction, I mean, uh, inspiration. God breathed on us, and the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.16, that all scripture are given by the inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and righteousness, that the man and woman of God, that we can be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. God didn't have to do it. He gave us everything that we need to be what we need. Can I get a witness? Yeah. But see, there are too many of us, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> we'll spend the time, we'll spend all the time trying to get the nice house. But then we we not we become too busy to make the house a home. We spend time trying to get the best job and have the best career. I wish I had a witness. And they become strangers to those in whom the Lord put in our lives. Work from sunrise to sunset, never have time to share with the people. We oftentimes take pride and look at these pretty, beautiful photos of the wedding, but then we spend so little time trying to make it a marriage. 
I wish I had a witness. We get so caught up in the superficial, spend time in the mundane, the stuff that don't matter to a heel of beans. I wish I had a witness. And brothers and sisters, it's the same way in the church. We get so caught up, we're trying to play church. Trying to look churchy rather than being the church. Everybody looked at this church, the church at Solomon, as a great church. Or oh, this church had it going on, had all the right ministries. Heaven hand ministry, choir ministry. Oh, can I get a witness? Missions ministry. But yet, they took stuff, the important things of the church, like righteousness and holiness, sanctification, mercy, and grace, packed it up and sent it off. I wish I had a witness. I stop by to tell y'all, brothers and sisters, we need to turn it around, but we got to get back to the things that are important. How I many of you know that if, if this was a big old church or a cathedral and everybody, everybody just, just look at the beautiful building, and look how pretty it is, look how large it is, everybody wants to follow you to the big church. But don't nobody want to go to not many members Baptist church. Not many people want to go to few seats, few seats of holiness church. They began to say, well, there ain't no room for me. We ain't got no room there. And they, we might as well stay at home. But I stopped by to tell y'all, this church here at Sardis had the same thing. It had a good look as if it was a great church. But Jesus said, I know your work and your works are dead. I thought I'd tell you, don't be fooled by the grass there on the other side because it ain't always greener. Can I get a witness? Everything that shines ain't glitter, ain't gold. I wish I had a witness. I wish I had a witness. There are folk who will flock for the assembly, but I want you to know that there are a lot of people that are going the wrong way because the scripture said there's a broad way and there is a narrow way. Can I get a witness? And it said on the broad way, there's going to be a whole bunch of folk going in there. But straight and narrow is the gate that leads to life. And there's going to be only a few people who go in. I want to know, are you part of the few? Are you part of the many? I want to be part of the few. I want to be the one that lined up with Jesus. I want to be the one that stand on his word. I want to be the one that says, God, wherever you lead me, I will follow you. Can I get a witness in here? for certain if we can turn it around. Well, the scripture says strengthen that which remain. In other words, strengthen that which is left. What's left? If you want to strengthen that remain, that means that something is still left. Amen? And every church, brothers and sisters, this church and that church, every church that is named the name of Christ, we ought to have something there. Amen. Well, I want you to know something. Something the scripture tells us that we can find out what's left. That we can turn it around. If anybody here know that life is left, Amen. if it ain't dead, it still has some life. Can I get a witness? And my Bible teaches me that you won't ever die. You're going to transition from this world into the world of eternity with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen, if you're a believer. If you're an unbeliever, you're going to, you're going to go into the world of eternity, a separation from Jesus, where you'll spend all eternity in a devil's hell. Y'all ain't heard me. But one thing for certain, you're going to be more alive there in heaven or hell than you are right now. Right. You won't ever, only thing that's going to die is this whole body. And so what the scripture tells us, listen, there's still something left. That what's left, our life is left. And if you still got life on this side of it, you and I, we need to turn it around. Yeah. That yeah. not only life is left, but love is left. Can I get a witness? Love, the Bible says in, in, in 1 Corinthians 13, love will never fail. Love will never cease. Amen. I wish I had a win. All this other stuff is going to pass away. But how many of you know that love will not pass away? But not only do your life, not only do your love, but brothers and sisters, something that is left still, not your life and your love is left, but also your labor is left. 
Don't fool yourself. Don't think that what you do right here is it. The scripture says in Revelation 14 that their works do follow them. Anybody know that when you leave this world, you're going to leave a life and a love and a love and a labor that everybody from this generation on back after you and I are gone can still receive of it? Why in the world should we leave a legacy for our people that follow us, the people that will see us of life, love, and labor? Because even in glory, when we're long gone, they're still, they're still, they're still been credit added to us when somebody looked into our life and they looked into our love and they looked into our labor that we did while we were here. That they, They're gleaning from it. You don't know who's going to be saved after you die just because they heard or they received what you put in place before you left. Can I get away? You don't know how many of our children we are going to accept the Lord Jesus Christ after we're gone or, uh, because they, they look back back through, down through the years, and they remember how daddy, how mama, how granddaddy, how grandmama used to pray, how they re used to pray and read their Bible and share the gospel with them. You don't know, but you're going to be on over there in glory, and you're going to get the word that your child received Christ, that your grandchild received Christ, that your family received Christ, that your friends received Christ. I stop by to tell you, we can still turn it around if we strengthen what's left, if we understand what is left. Life is left. Love is left. Labor is left. And I take my clothes and my brothers and sisters as life is left. If a life is left, then the first thing I want to leave you with these three points, letter A. Uh, I want you to understand if life is left, then we need to be, do first thing is complete the works of Jesus. Y'all with me? Yeah. In our life, we need to have completed works, the completed works of Jesus. Notice what he says in verse 2. He says, strengthen that the things which remain that are ready to die. He says, they're ready to die, but it ain't dead. He said, but I have not found that thy works perfect before God. In other words, he said, our works have not been completed before God. And if we, in our life, complete the works of Jesus, how many of you know we got to be like Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 and 58, when we can declare our thanks be unto God with giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? That we, my brothers and we, my sisters, that we'll be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for in them we can discover that our labor is not in vain. Is there anybody in here know that your life, because you still got life in your body, and we live and we move because God has given us our being? How many of you know that we got to complete the works that Jesus gave us? Because Jesus said in John 6, 29, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, because the night is going to come when no man can work. There's going to come a day when you take your last breath. There's going to come a day when you shut your eyes for the last time over here and you can't be able to work no more. But like the great hymn that the hymn writer said, may the work stop done. Let it speak for me. Can I get a witness? Is there anybody in here know that there's still a work to be done? You can't quit right now because there is a bright side of something. See? 
to say, yeah, and everybody in here has been made up in your mind. You want to continue to walk with Jesus, because Jesus, he can lead you into the straight path. Jesus, he'll lead you to the true path. Jesus, he'll fight your battle. Jesus, he'll be a battle like fire in a time of war. Jesus, Yes, sir. 
turn your label around and myself <coughs> do likewise. Can you imagine how many people we'll reach and what a difference we will make wherever we are? You may not get everybody, but get the ones you can. Just one soul makes the difference. But you know what? We come to church, we do life, we say we do love, we do labor. But it's all about me, myself, and I. It's not about you. It's not about me. But it's about glory to God. What God will help us to do. What God will help us to do. And if you're not sold out for Christ, if you're not doing that for Christ, I want you to know, you are a dead church. If I'm not, I am a dead church. And dead people make dead churches. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me? The church can only be alive if you are alive. If you're not alive for your Jesus and Jesus is not alive in you, who in the world wants to be part of your dead church? Who in the world wants to be part of your dead life? It's time out for that. It's time for us to come alive for Jesus. Turn it around. Strengthen what's left. You may not have a lot of money. You may not have a lot of this or that. But you still got life. And you still got some love. And you still got some labor. Yes, you do. So the next time the Lord said, join this, do this, go here, go there. What kind of excuse you gonna make? When it comes time to being in the Lord's house on Sunday morning, what kind of excuse you gonna make? When it comes down to studying, praying, getting in line with God through, what kind of excuses you gonna make? Y'all know we good at making excuses. I have made quite a few myself. I have made more than a few. I have made more than my share. But I want you to know, when we stand before him, all the excuses will be all over. Only what we do for Christ will last. And when he confess you to be his witness, or will he say, depart from me? We'll invite you to that great fellowship banquet. Or will you be saying, man, I sure, sure would be nice if I had a meal. It's up to you. You can turn it around. Will this be your day? If you come today, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, first thing to do is make him your Lord and Savior. Second thing is, if you do know him, the Lord is saying, commit your life to serving him, being obedient to him. Because the importance is, you know who the Holy Spirit is in your life, and you know his instruction, and you know his inspiration. So remember what you receive, and repent, and do the first works. God will confess you through his son. Jesus, will you come? I decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. One verse. I decided to do what?